boy, that's some good light. I feel like I'm back in an old west saloon. Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in the North 40. I'm Rick. I'll be doing a video by myself without Brittany this week. Really wet outside, currently pouring in thunder and rain. So today I wanted to talk about five basic illumination or lighting options for when you have a power outage. Some of these you may not have considered, some of them you may have used. I think the first category we've all used. All right, let's get started. Our first category, flashlights. Okay, I got two basic flashlights here. These are both LED. Over the last few years, these have become the standard and they're so much brighter and they use less battery power. This is a, got a lot more batteries in it. It's multiple double A's actually, not D size like old mag lights. Super bright, look how bright that is, okay? And we keep this by our front door. Nice big one. This one, same brand, more convenient and small. I put a little keychain carabiner on it. This hangs by our back laundry room door for a quick light for a power outage. Once again, these are super bright. Flashes, all that good stuff. So, my recommendation though, as you can see on my head, for a battery powered flashlight option is to go with a headlamp. Why? Because wherever I look, this light will shine. All right, I can tilt it down while I'm working or whatever. I can go hands-free. That's the biggest benefit of these, hands-free. You see this has multiple settings. It even has side lights. Look how bright that is. And then you can turn the main light off and it'll get brighter. And then you can even hit this a couple times and it should go red lens, okay? So this thing has a lot of options. It's a bigger, bulkier one than what they used to be, but so much brighter, so many options. Wow. All these cool options, very bright. Pretty good for a power outage. So that concludes category number one, flashlights. Let's look at our non-battery powered options. Category number two, a non-battery option here. The good old fashioned gas powered mantle style lantern. This one uses the one pound propane style bottle. Before these, I don't know if you remember, I'm old enough, we had the white gas ones that we'd pump up air pressure. Works the same. These do require the mantles. These are what they look like before you burn the mantle, put them on and burn them. What this is, it just basically turns to ash. So this is self-starting. Let's see if we can crank it first time. See how bright it gets, okay? Sometimes it takes a couple clicks. There we go. So. Those mantles are nothing more than ash, and they are a little fragile as well as this glass globe, but this gets super bright. You can adjust the brightness depending on your gas valve here, how much gas you give it. Say you're uh, in the evening, you want to tone it down a little bit. It's pretty bright in here to film, but this thing is bright, very bright on max level. So what's the downside of this one? It takes fuel. When you run out of propane, the lantern doesn't work. You can also break the lantern pretty easily, like I said. But this is a great version. We've used this for years camping, as you probably have. All right. All right, well, I guess I got some light anyway. That's a pretty bright option, everybody. This is one of the brightest, I'm sure. Category number three. Our other non-battery option, now we're starting to get a little more rudimentary and basic, but this is a old school standby for power outages and off-grid scenario. The good old kerosene lantern. We actually have two of these. So the kerosene goes down to the reservoir here where you fill it there, and it operates off of a wick. Um, and right now, I have the wick down because I test ran it, but uh, you raise the globe this way, and then you can raise the wick down here, okay? If you've ever heard the term trim your wick, trimming my wick, that's from the lantern days. To go ahead and put your flame out or adjust the brightness, you would trim it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna light this up. You have to extend it and there's kerosene in it. So that wick will suck the kerosene. Okay, got it lit. So now we're just gonna lower the globe here. And that is a real high flame. So I am currently trimming my wick. You can see I have a low flame. That'll defog in a minute, just got warm. Or I can make it super bright. And this is what they used to use on the railroad back in the old days. They would signal, they'd have a red globe on here. They could swing this. The miners used to use these in the 1800s. People used these in their houses. This is what you should have as a great backup. It lasts quite some time. Okay, so you'll see 
I can make it bright or not. Okay, got a great handle, I can hang it from this too, or I can hang it from the handle as well and suspend it above a workspace. What I have here is a little backup kerosene. This is commonly sold in a lot of farm stores or hardware stores. This is more expensive in this style bottle. It's got a color to it, so it's smokeless, um, and sometimes will make your flame blue or green or whatever, a little more expensive. You can get, and I have out in my shop, I have a five gallon thing of kerosene. I've got a big metal container of kerosene that's a way better price for the size of volume. A lot of people use those in kerosene heaters. Works great in these as well. Also, make sure that you have some backup wick. These wicks don't last forever. They will burn off. As I said, you can extend that out. That wick is down in the liquid and it's got quite a bit in there. I don't know how much it actually came with, but really inexpensively on Amazon, you can get backup extra wick. So I have two rolls here, you can cut it and use that for a replacement. Again, always having a contingency and redundancy. some good light. I feel like I'm back in an old west saloon. What we have here is candles, option four. No batteries, good old school, old fashioned. I'm showing a couple things I just want you to be aware of. I got all of these things at Walmart. Um, you could get them on Amazon, something similar I'm sure. Very inexpensive at Walmart. Just wanted to highlight a couple things. Taper candles. They have nice big votive candles here that are pretty good size. And those votive candles you can see are inside that lantern. I put four votive candles in here. We're gonna light this up and we're gonna light this and see how bright they are. And then I've got one of those tapers in a glass holder. They sell a whole pack of these holders, which we have a six pack. This is not really good to walk around with, but it does catch the dripping wax. So this is good for setting on a desk while you're writing, working, or a workspace, uh, your table, whatever. And then I've got different column style pillar candles. This is four inch diameter, eight inches high, this pillar candle. The problem is I thought, hey man, that's gonna last a long time. And it will, super cool. It won't fit in this lantern. That's okay, you can set that on a dinner plate, whatever, and boy, that's gonna give you some hours of, of illumination. These are, these are just a basic wax, they're not beeswax, they're, but whatever, they're very inexpensive. This is another pillar candle. This is three inch diameter by six inches high. And this one is three inch diameter by four inches high. So this one is the size we fit in the big lantern. The little lantern, none of these will fit except that one. You could use it in this lantern, that's cool. But I just put four votive uh, candles in here. We're gonna light all four and let's see how those look. So this is a candle option for you to have a mobile lantern. Really cool, you gotta go to the outhouse, you gotta go check the shop. We're talking, we don't have power. Um, maybe we're off grid. Um, and we've had a, you know, an issue with power. The power grids have gone down. I think this was like, they were like 10 or 12 bucks. I can't remember. Little one was 10, maybe 12 for this one. But again, super good deal. So have a lantern or a mobile option for your candles. Wow, okay. This one has, the flames are a lot lower. So my lesson I learned there is those votives are putting off more light, smaller, shorter candle. Yeah, this one's gonna last longer, but the light isn't reflecting as good. It's kind of higher up, but I have light from them both. Let's see, I'll put one behind my back. Hey, it's like Paul Revere's ride, old lantern. There's that one, and then here's the four votives. So that's pretty bright. I think the four votives is brighter overall out of those two. I hope you're enjoying our video. I'm sure loving making it on this cold, wet, rainy day. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like our content. And thanks for all your support. We just went over a thousand subscribers. We appreciate that. We're super excited. We're also gonna list a lot of the products we're highlighting today. The links will be in the description box below. Another great thing to have for mobility to move your candle around in your house, no power, going from room to room. They have a nice little loop handle on them. They're metal, good sturdy metal. This will catch any wax drips as well. Um, and they, the candles both fit really good in here. So you'll see I have a brown candle and a white candle. This is that same taper candle from Walmart, very inexpensive. These are a bundle and I bought several 
beeswax candles on Amazon. So these are handmade by a family, US made, very cool, and high-end beeswax candles. Are they more expensive than this kind of thing from Walmart? Absolutely, but the burn time on these are like four or five hours. So I found the tag that came with these beeswax candles when I ordered them from Amazon, and the cool thing about these, American-made family company, it's called BeTheLight.com. You can get them on Amazon or go to their website, I guess. So they have their published burn times. They have votives, they have all kinds of stuff, large, they have different size uh, pillar candles. They have a six inch taper and an eight inch taper. That's the eight inch taper. These things have up to a 10 hour burn time. Wow. That's why beeswax is superior. Um, and it's just, and it's not toxic. We don't know sometimes these Chinese made candles from Walmart, what's really in them. But I don't know what the published burn time is on this taper from Walmart. But what I will say is look how far it's burned down just since I've been talking. It's burned down probably a, a, almost a half inch. And this one here is barely burned down at all. So very cool. This is also a beeswax candle. I use these in my survival kits. This is by Yuko. This is a 12 hour burn time. And these are a smaller, fatter one. These also work in candle lanterns. So I just wanted to highlight another beeswax option. I got light. It's pretty, pretty small, but I got light. I can see what's going on. I can see you. Well, it looks like the storm stopped, or at least it took a break for a few minutes. So category number five, or number five, is chemical lights, okay? This is, we call them chem lights in the military. This is actually this, almost the same brand we use. Um, these come in all different colors, sizes, and burn times. They don't burn, the burn of the light. This is a 12 hour chem light. Make sure when you buy chem lights, you look at the time that they last. All right, I recommend if you're gonna spend the money, get a 12 hour, right? The longest, I don't know that many burn or last longer than that. This is a color green. They have different colors. I use a mini chem light that's got a six hour illumination time for my mini survival tins. So anyway, this is a great option, you know, with no liability for fuel, like kerosene, like, a, you know, that gas canister for the lantern. Candles are bulky as well. So consider a chem light now. Can you light up a room with one of these and illuminate a large area? You cannot. That's the issue. I can, I've actually read maps by these. You can wave it over your map, and then when it's dark out, you can see. So you could read by these if you had to, but obviously candles and or one of those other options for a long-term power outage or off-grid scenario where the power grid's down to light up your dinner table, your cook space, your work area. I mean, we're gonna have to function at night with no power, right? So that's why we really need to consider these things. These are also really good for illuminating pathways or like a lighting up your bathroom or your outhouse. Um, I just envision a, a power our power grid going out. That's why I was thinking about this video. What are some of the options? We need to gotta kind of go back in time and do a lot of the techniques and procedures that they used to do because we have become so dependent on power. I know we're thankful for our power, but when we don't have power, so many things don't work and you don't even think about it. So keep these things in mind and if you haven't purchased these, I highly recommend you get these as soon as possible. You know, pound for pound, this beats the candle. It's just a single wick taper candle for brightness on the old Ebenezer Scrooge deal. I forgot how bright these were actually in this dark room. It's really illuminating. I can see everything in this room pretty much. And uh, yeah, that is gonna last for 12 hours too. So you can definitely read by this. So can you see me? You can read, boom. Well everybody, thanks for joining us this week and for our five best options for having your power out or off-grid scenario for illumination or lighting from most common, easiest to use to maybe some old-fashioned options. So keep your eyes peeled and get these products before they're gone. Please don't forget, like and subscribe. Any comments, throw them down below. Thanks.